Hi sexy, come and watch till the end. A man sits in his pickup on a wet night. He puts away his wedding ring, lights a match, and gets out of the vehicle with a gas canister and hammer, showing his anger. He frightens the insiders who hurry to help. Andy, her lawyer and closest friend, awakens Rachel from her sofa nap. He informs her that her soon-to-be ex-husband wants her home and they should protest. Rachel stops talking when her son instructs her to get dressed. Kyle and his uncle Fred are in the dining room, chatting with his elderly mother. The news is discussing the prior horrific incident, stating, Fred and Kyle chat as Rachel searches for candy cane scissors. Fred's girlfriend joins them at the table and they discuss their money issues, notably the expense of nursing home care for their mother. Kyle and she depart in their ancient, broken-down auto wheel. They debated using the highway amid traffic. Even though her son claims they will be late, mom takes the expressway. Her kid happily answers her husband's phone as she is driving. He Rachel's fired, the son teases her to cheer her up, then suggests they take the next exit from the freeway and go through the service streets coming out of the freeway. They stop at a red light behind a gray pickup that does not move as the light changes, so she honks and drives around him on the next light. The man who set the house on fire pulls up next to their car and asks them to roll their windows down, which Kyle does. Rachel and the guy had an uncomfortable back and forth, with him belittling her and then apologizing, expecting her to do the same. When she snaps back, he becomes rattled and furious, telling her that she will learn what a terrible day truly means. Kyle is afraid and wants her to leave, but the guy follows them and cuts them off again. Rachel takes another route and gets Kyle to school late, calling Andy to meet her for breakfast in 20 minutes despite her low gas. Rachel stops at a gas station, sets the pump, and goes inside to get a few other things when she goes to the cashier to pay she sees the gray pickup parked behind her car worried she tells the cashier and a guy standing in line next to her that the man in the pickup has been following her after an argument. The guy says he'll walk her out and get his plates as she fuels the tank and gets in the car. The guy tells her the man's plates she drives off and then the guy stays behind telling the man and the pickup not to follow suddenly the man reins him over into the street and he gets hit by a second car while the pickup continues to chase after Rachel she tries to lose him on the way but they get stuck in a traffic jam again with him right behind her he rams in her car over and over but no one reacts they start driving again and Rachel can't find her phone to call for help the man pulls up next to her and shows her that he has her phone she drives off causing an accident on the way and almost running over a woman thinking she has finally lost him she pulls up into a parking lot to hide and calm her nerves Meanwhile, Andy is waiting for Rachel in a diner, calling her but getting only voicemail. The man with a pickup walks in and heads straight for Andy. He lies to him and says he's an old friend of Rachel's. He then sits down and chats him up. They talk about scary experiences with road rage and about Rachel's divorce. The man is defending her soon-to-be ex-husband. Andy gets uncomfortable, so the man lies and says he could get Rachel on the phone. He tells him to try. He gets in his own phone, back at the parking lot, Rachel is looking for her tablet when she suddenly hears a ringing. She finds a phone and picks it up, even though it's not her phone. The man gives Andy his cell phone and he tells her that he's waiting for her in the diner with an old fiend of hers. She says she doesn't know anyone by the name given and he turns the phone over to the man the moment she starts talking about him, calling him a psycho, explaining what happened. He tells her that she needs to truly apologize to him in person, which alerts Andy that something isn't right. And he asks for his phone back. That's the moment when the man hits Andy with a cup breaking his nose. Everyone in the diner gets upset. But no one helps when the man slams his head on the table knocking him out he puts Rachel on speaker and continues to talk to her asking if Andy is really just her lawyer and friend or if she's cheating on her husband with him just like his own wife did he tells Rachel to say her last words to Andy as he chokes him and eventually stabs him while the people in the diner still do nothing except film the situation as the man is walking out of the diner he tells Rachel that Andy is dead she tries to plead with him and apologizes but the man doesn't believe her and speeds away the man calls her again from her own phone and starts reciting all the messages she's gotten including one from her son's school he starts toying with her and asking her to choose who he should kill next from her contact list when she refuses, he sends all her money to her husband and threatens to go after her mom and to burn her house down. Rachel chooses herself, but he doesn't accept and asks for another name. She chooses the name of the client that fired her. He hangs up and Rachel immediately calls the police. They arrive at the house of her client, 
but the man isn't there back at the house Fred is watching what happened in the diner on the news. There's a strange noise coming from the other room and his girlfriend doesn't respond to his calls he goes to check on her and on the way he sees the pickup park before the house the noises continue and it follows him with a knife on hand. The man appears holding his beaten up girlfriend and telling him about what happened with Rachel he says he feels insignificant and that the only thing he has left is violence and revenge so he kills Fred's girlfriend and then sends Rachel a photo of him with her brother the man calls her again and she tells him she called the police which he already knows he checks the tracker on Rachel's phone sees that she's in front of Kyle's school and tells her that she has three minutes to pick him up and drive away or he'll kill Fred he tells Fred to write her a letter blaming her for his girlfriend's death all the while pouring gasoline on him meanwhile Rachel gets her son out of school as they're driving away she calls the man back telling him she is Kyle the man tells her to put him on a speaker or he'll light her brother on fire he makes Fred read his letter stating that Rachel is accountable for everything and that he will never see another dawn the guy hides behind Fred as a policeman enters the premises he burns Fred and escapes but the officer shoots him in the shoulder Rachel stops the vehicle and cries as Kyle consoles her he calls again to inform her that Fred is dead he threatens Kyle, who breaks the phone. Kyle and her drive to the police station. Rachel's iPad may be following them. Kyle discovers it taped beneath her seat and wants to toss it away. But Rachel suggests tracking the guy with a tablet as he did it. Before Kyle knows he is directly in front of them, having taken her neighbor's vehicle, she orders him to put his seatbelt on. Kyle calls the police from the tablet, but they cannot assist. The tablet battery fails, leaving them alone. Rachel goes to her mother's home, where the neighborhood is intricate enough to slow him down. He speeds up with her, creating vehicle accidents. She fools him long enough to go to her mother's home and let Rachel and the guy emerge from concealment when the child makes a sound. Rachel attacks the guy to keep him from reaching Kyle. He knocks her down and strangles her son, but she kills him with candy cane scissors. The officer who discovered Fred tells Rachel and Kyle that Fred is alive when the cops come. Fred's residence. The end. See you later, sexy.